guy now with inappropriate. You are now live. There's the notification. of the NB Insider, and we're hanging out today. Today is uh, today's kind of mad thrash day, and uh, I'm going to sit down with one of my dudes, one of the guys that you've seen on camera, off camera, some candid moments. I'm sitting down with Tim Sletton from Sletton Engineering today as well. He's joining us. Um, we're just going to shoot the breeze, talk about some of the stuff that you guys, we kept under wraps for a moment. You guys knew we were building something. Um, but we kept it in our wraps. We didn't, we didn't show pictures. We didn't talk about, we didn't show what the car was going to look like or really what we were going to do. You just all knew we were, uh, building some cool stuff. And, um, and the man behind it all is with me today. So Tim, thanks for coming to hang out. Yes. Thank you. I think we, uh, knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I think we took a couple of years off our life <laughs> getting to that point. And, uh, and, and before we do get started, I think it's, um, it's super important for me personally. Um, to just thank, you know, obviously you and and everybody that played a role into this um, builds, these builds. Uh, I think it was, I think it came in a time in the in, in our lives or in the world itself that it was an escape um, from the certain reality. Um, and and all the guys that played a role in this, uh, I, I'm going to thank them uh, to the best of my ability down the list. But obviously, Timmy, you're a huge uh, Pistol Pete. Everything was, you know, he's sitting in the back over here tonight, just kind of creeping in the corner. Um, you know, Byron and Mike and Andy, and I'm even going to thank Mr. Wink. The, I mean, the Negrettis. And, and the Negrettis, Jr. and Sr. for coming up. I mean, there's so many people that played a role. Nelson. Yep. I mean, I know we're going to forget people. My buddy Patrick, um, let alone uh, even Jack Sacchetti. I mean, always yes. put, you know, chiming in on stuff and willing to stay late. We, we, you guys, we built those cars 100% in this building and, and to see what, uh, when we're going to give you a snippet of it later, but for, for us to see, uh, they come to fruition and for the group here and the team here, we're really hoping it was inspirational. I think it gained momentum as, as, uh, as they saw the progression of it from old, you know, rusty shit box, um, to, to a couple of Gucci little rides. So, yeah, I think we took something that most cases isn't meant to be that nice and we took everything to the next level which was pretty awesome yeah and we rushed it. we were just talking pre-show kind of just shoot, shooting the shit a little bit and it's like we rushed that like we didn't get to do the body work on the cars that we wanted to do we i mean but we had a deadline to make to make everything work and uh they came out good man kudos yeah. to you and the guys and, and again i'm truly thankful for uh for everything um, that, that the entire, I mean, and let me tell you guys right now, um, you saw us doing candid shots at 10, 11 o'clock at night. There was more than one hand I could count where we were two, three in the morning. Uh, I mean, there was the weekend, the final crunch days and we were at three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, back to back week, back to back days. Yeah. Poor pistol. And I didn't get to bed <laughs> till five o'clock Sunday morning to go test it was supposed to be nine i think it ended up noon <laughs> but uh but yeah we you know 
we made it. And uh, and again, shout out to you, man. So I see already you guys chiming in. First of all, thank you guys for tuning in each and every week. It's very cool to see uh, Moose all the way checking in from Australia. Shane Hook, I know we will show you the dash. Uh, thank you for <laughs> subscribing to the channel. I just saw you subscribed. Um, Salus from Mexico, thank you. Abe, I always appreciate everything you guys do for sharing the show up in Sacramento. I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys um, at one of the shows um, uh, in the near future. Darren, as always, you're a regular on the show, mm -hmm. checking in. We'll see you in about 48 hours. I'm going to do a burnout across your lawn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yep. Wink chiming in. Tim is the man. I would uh, I would agree. Tim was grouchy um, a few times and a little a little odd, a little awkward. But um, you know what? You know, I, you know, you know. I, again, we've talked about this, and I kind of want to share some of this stuff with you. So you guys are gonna. These are unscripted. These are just shooting the shit. But you know what I wanted to build, right? I think we both knew what our goal was. Where do you think? Where do you think it kind of came in as far as? you know, expectations or just the vision that I had of like really what we wanted to do. Um, well, from the get go, I know you had told me you wanted to build really nice cars for me. I knew I could execute on the chassis suspension components, that kind of stuff. But to be honest, you kind of opened my eyes on the attention to detail of things that I had never even looked at before. You know, it's like pinpointing certain things that, yeah, I typically wouldn't touch and, I think we managed to touch everything on the car and make it look good, which was great. Yeah. And then I, I think it was really neat to showcase some of the new ideas and the innovations to this, to this cage, right? There's a yeah. lot of, um, you know, with sled engineering running completely independently on, on its own now, and for you to be able to put your own new visions and, and designs and creativity um, to it all. I think it was really good for, for, for you and for us to, build these cars yeah. and for you to showcase really what you're doing. I mean, guys, if you don't know, I mean, that's how this gentleman makes his living is by building race cars and fabrication work. So, you know, for him to be able to showcase that and partner with, you know, with MP, obviously, yeah. you know, we are who we are, but um, to be able to build that and to showcase your designs, yeah. your creativity, your new way of thinking, I think it was huge, man. And it was awesome to, to see that. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I know we talked about it last time, you know, things are, changing in the industry now we're building lighter cars and um i think we executed that with these luckily we'll be putting them on the scales tomorrow hopefully and we'll hit our mark yeah fleming ron fleming has graced us uh with uh with allowing us to use his four corner scale so he's bringing them in fresh off the bug in tour <laughs> so no those are um he's got a set of four corner scales so we're gonna put those cars on there and see how they balance out and really where we need to do it if we'll make some more adjustments um Maybe have to put a quarter turn or so on the left driver's side of a car too. You never really know, but hey, what happens? I mean, te testing wise, though, I think every went everything went well. I mean, they, we drove them on the trailer. For, first of all, for those of you guys who know, we did finish those cars. Um, you know, uh, against all the <laughs> naysayers, uh, uh, we did finish the cars early Sunday morning. Um, you saw the kind of the build up to it. You did get a couple of photos that were leaked. Uh, thanks a lot, Wilkie. Um, but uh, but but no, we finished cars like four in the morning, and you never even got to drive your car. I mean, we literally drove your car onto the trailer, so it drove on its own power for the first time. We don't know if it was going to turn, stop, pull yeah. to the right, or whatever. But we were going testing, come hell or high water. I know. So Dale Mike got the first initial break in drive. Yeah, cr christened it. So, um, but it was it was just cool to be able to go out. I think we had a very successful test session. You know, we drove the cars out. You know, drove the cars on the trailer, drove the cars back on the trailer. And they they performed and handled really really well. So, um, you know, guys, it's open. So if you guys want to send any questions, you want some design stuff, um, you want to know. I know there's a guy building a couple of cars out there. Idiot Racing guys have been building some stuff. So you know, that's really what these, you know, what the MP Garage is all about is to hopefully inspire you to go out and find a Volkswagen that you know you like and maybe go out and build it yourself. But enlist some of the stuff. Everything that we have that we use in the shop is readily available to the general public. You know, um, whether it be our JMR2 bender, you can do it with a manual. We just happen to opt for the hydraulic. You know, our our plasma cutter straight out of Harbor Freight. Yes. You know, our 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 welder is straight out of Harbor Freight. 
what's up Volcan? Yeah, Miller never came. So yeah, Volcan the, yeah. It was. You know, Miller, we're still waiting, buddy. We'd love to have some Miller, Miller equipment or Lincoln, you know, we're, we're, we're not biased. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I mean, everything performed really well. And, and to, to be able to do that for guys that, you know, bolt that JMR to your floor and, and put a cheater bar on it and bend away. Yeah. But, you know, uh, we did it, you know, we did it, bought the metal at a local metal supply place and made multiple runs and, and, uh, took our time. So, you know, just to, to, to do that at the MB garage and to hopefully try to, uh, like I said, inspire somebody or inspire a father son project or a family build, or it doesn't even have to be off road. It could just be, you know, um, working on your general maintenance of an old bug you got, but it's something to do to work on our create and build, especially to distract you sometimes of just the world things. And know? I think that was a nice part of it too. You know, the guys that came in, Larry and his dad, uh, Byron and Nelson, Willie, um, Andy, Mike, all those guys, you know, I was able, you know, on my end on the stuff that I know kind of teach them that stuff, you know, now they can go home, do that stuff themselves and also spread that knowledge to other people at the same time. Yeah. I um, mean, that, that's, that, that was one of the things that I think just sit back and watching, you know, we, we had such a, a hodgepodge of, of different characters in the shop, you know, and then, and, and uh, some are, are fabricating um, type of individuals. Some are not, you know, some of them are just scrub and clean and do this, do that. And some are really good at vinyl. Eh? Yeah. Some are not so good at vinyl, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> you know, but everybody didn't matter what, it was right. It was just a called upon. So I, I really just enjoyed the time spent, the camaraderie, um, that fellowship to a point, um, you know, of just the jokes, the, the, you know, we leave our world problems in the parking lot yeah. and we came in the shop, there was no politics and no bullshit. And then we just had a good time with, with just men, you know, yeah. just good dude time. So, yeah, and, it, and that's why, I say that, you know, it wasn't just a one man show, you know, everybody definitely did their part to make sure the cars got done. What, what was your, I mean, we all know you, you're, you're a fabricator and you like to create and bend and do stuff, but what was there any other parts on the cars that you just really took time and enjoyed doing? I think the dash plates and getting the dashes set up was probably the highlight of it all. I mean, just from the start of that to the finish of it, you know, creating something that wasn't already created and taking one and putting an IQ three in it and then doing the monster tack in the other, just getting all that stuff to fit was really, really cool. cool. Yeah. These cars are named, you know, yeah. so I won't tell you the names. I guess you'll have to earn it and come up with a way. Um, but, uh, you know, we are kind of tagging the slogan of double vision for the, for the cars. Um, I think it works really well. And, uh, there's some future articles that are coming out. Um, these two vehicles will be a full ride up and some pictures and stuff like that. So it's very cool. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get through the questions. Kind of just a chill day today, guys. So I hope you don't mind. We're just, there's a couple of things we're covering. Talk about King of the Hammers going out. Um, Big Larry, what's up? Larry Senior checking in. Thank you so much uh, for coming out and cutting that sheet metal off my car, both <laughs> planned and unplanned. Um, Wink, appreciate you checking in, man uh definitely the fire under his ass to watch let's see what we got here let's see what we got definitely lit a fire under my ass was awesome to watch and i definitely was taking notes i mean straight up all bs aside like wink dove in head orange petals and all and orange petals and all but uh you know he dove in wherever it needed it didn't matter and and uh and uh you know he was a huge help to this last home stretch of the cars because guys had to go to work and guys had to do this. So we were really down a couple of helpers that were key and, and that dude came in clutch. So appreciate it, Wink. I really do. It was pretty cool to to uh hear some of your fucking whack stories, <laughs> but uh, but overall it was just a good time, man. And, and we had a great time working together and uh you know, we succeeded, right? That was yeah. the biggest thing is that we had set a goal for ourselves. It was a very lawfully goal, especially as we start going down the detail rabbit hole of trying to make the cars nicer than what had been expected. Um, and then to, to push, uh, further, you know, uh, um, it was, it was, it was tough, yeah. but we, but we pulled it off and, uh, and now we're, now we're ready for the big show. What, what do you feel, um, 
really on your car and like the cars in general. And, and the, I mean, the, the course is going to be nuts. The weather now is nuts. It was snowing up there. So we can kind of get right into some of the King of the Hammer stuff and what we think is going to go down. I mean, when Pistol Pete and I took off in the car to begin with, I it was nice to jump into a car that felt that good from the get-go. Um, obviously, we started with some shocks that were already pre-valved, but it was a great feeling to start with that, knowing that we only needed minor adjustments. Um, I'm pretty sure you feel the same about years. It needs some minor adjustments, but right off the bat, it feels good, so... That's already a plus going into the race, and I, I think going to King of the Hammers is going to be a little rougher than most people think. We've been so used to these legit short course races on flat track pretty much, you know, as fast as you can take the car. Lucerne is no joke. I mean, you'll you'll be in a four-foot silt bed before you know it on the dry lake bed, and obviously there's just rocks everywhere. So I think we're looking at more of a attrition than we are a speed race for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I knowing, and I've said this before, knowing that, you know, Dave's kind of got a sick and twisted mind, meaning Dave Cole from King of the Hammers, yeah. about some of the obstacles I'm sure he'll put in a place. Um, the course, I still think, will be fast, but there's a, there's some definitely some spots that are going to bite you if you aren't careful. Man. I don't want to find those spots. Yeah. I like my car shiny. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's, it's, I think I agree with you. I think it will be, a you know, survival of survival of the fittest and the prep and everything else. That's going to be de definitely, uh, definitely a tough one. Yeah. And it looks like we've pushed in hopefully 15 entries at the most. We'll see. I, yeah, I think I, from what I gather, I think we're at 18, including us. Yeah. And I don't want to, I don't want to put them on the spot, but Alex Gonzalez messaged me today. I think he's going to jump in on the fun. There we go. So now we should be at 19. I, my goal was to be C, 20 cars up there. would be pretty sick. Um, I think this is the land rush start. I really, and I honestly, man, the vibe and the hype. And I mean, Eddie, what do you think so far too? I mean, the the feedback and the, the overall just vibe about the whole race. I think once people felt that the race was still going to go down and it was all good, despite that stupid LA Times article, um, everybody kind of started getting hyped man and then yeah. the 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 pictures that you know the zumpsons have been sharing and other people throughout just watching the hammer town getting built starts building that hype up and then just um the live cam you know being able to see what's going on i think it's going to be bitching i hope i really 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 hope that we can get everybody lined up in a row and do yeah. one land rush start and not like the six at a time kind of yeah. thing i really want to see a land rush. First corner is going to be a mess. But First it'll be worth corner it. is going to be ugly. And then it's time to call Cameron and Brian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We got the fenders and we got some extra paint, but we'll get them all ready to rock and roll. Um, Larry Jr., thanks for checking in. Many of you guys don't know, um, Cameron Frey, my normal co-pilot, um, and Ricky are unable to make this event. Cameron actually um, had his baby girl this morning. So this morning, right? It was late last night. Last night. Late, late last night. Yeah. I think it was official. Facebook official yeah. today. Ah, ah. But uh, but no, um, Cameron had his beautiful little baby girl, four pounds, four ounces, 18 inches long. And uh, both mom and baby girl are doing fine and doing well. Um, Dad. She's a tiny little thing. Yes. But uh, if you know the parents, they're both little lemmings. So <laughs> I wasn't surprised if they uh, if they made a little more, a tiny little baby. But uh She's beautiful and precious, and I'm super stoked for for the forays. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Cameron won't uh, won't be able to make it this trip, and uh, but uh, but we'll, we'll keep. Uh, Larry's gonna keep the seat warm for him, yeah. so don't be scared, Larry. You'll be all right, bud. Yeah, uh, let's see what else we got cooking. I'm just going through the comments, man. So you guys have questions, comments, things you want to know. We're gonna talk about a product here that was brought to us, um, did, delivered. But uh, we get those questions ready for Timmy or myself, and then we'll probably we're waiting, gonna make you wait a little bit to show some of the cars and some of the some of the shots we have of the cars. We also have some sponsors to thank too. Yes, that will we're gonna lead that into this seg next segment. So I appreciate you keeping me kind of on tack there. First, um, yes, we do have some sponsors. None of this essentially would be possible wouldn't be possible without the sponsors. Yes. We had a lot of people um, step up to. The, the plate once they kind of saw what we were doing um, and believed in kind of where we wanted to do it. 
and then to do it twice. Um, and it's, I think it's super impactful. So, um, not in any particular order or shape or any <laughs> way or anything else. Cause there's so many people to think, um, but definitely want to thank King shocks, um, out of the gate, uh, for, for building us, you know, two badass sets of, of shocks, two and a half sets. Um, I'm super thankful for them. They're badass. They gave us the full Gucci treatment on everything else. Um, big shout out to Brett, Jorge, um, Musgrave, all those guys over there. Um, thank, thankful, thankful for what you guys have done so far. And I really look forward to uh, representing the brands really well. Um, I want to give a very special thank you to Greg Quatrell and the entire Rugged Radio's family. Those dudes, um, without hesitation, have stepped up, supplied us with everything we've needed to make these cars go. Um, For five race cars, a couple chase trucks. Yeah, I mean, without without question, without hesitation. So I really, truly thank uh, thank you, Greg. Um, for for leading that ship the way you are, uh, and for for putting some awesome pe- people behind you and in your team, um, and thank you for trusting Tim and I to uh, represent the brand well, and 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 uh, and hopefully inspire others to to choose rugged radios because those things have not failed us; they've been great, um, and and uh, and just for for trusting the build and really where they don't we're we're basically chicken scratched. Hey, we this is what we want to do. Yeah. You know, we didn't put a whole this big crazy proposal together. This is hey, this is what we're gonna do. This is who's involved. You know, we're we're at MPHQ. We're gonna build this. We're gonna document it. We're gonna we're gonna show you the step by step. But uh, but yes, I'm super thankful. Um, and Greg, you know, without question, just mailed it out. And you know what I like about him the most is it's never. Um, it doesn't matter who it is. I mean, if you're somebody just building a car, give him a call. I mean, he's always willing to help out anybody you know you don't have to have status to get help from that man he'll do it out of the kindness of his heart yes he definitely likes to give back and uh, that's very cool of him and again thank you guys um mario thanks says thanks tim for not laughing at me when i asked how the heck to pull the motor on a vw yeah <laughs> so you know i mean that's that's the neat part of it it was like you know him and junior's first time doing it so yeah. but that's part of just learning yeah. the gig I could say, I mean, I had to learn the same way, figure it out, you know, with a little bit of advice and some things you just have to learn the hard way. Yes. Um, we're going to continue on down the thankful list. So it's kind of a reflection show. I mean, it's one of those stuff that where we finished our goal uh, to build the cars. Um, again, I, I, where do I even start? Uh, the Ferrays, Brian and, and Cam uh, for coming out and squirting both these cars yes. on, on, you know, um, gave up a weekend to make it happen. That's the best loading dog paint job I've ever seen. That much. <laughs> yeah. And that's, those are the, the only vinyl on that car is the white stripe and the stickers. Everything else is paint inside and out. So stoked on it. Thank you guys for knowing that we weren't going to get the body work done in time <laughs> and for, uh, adapting the, uh, uh, the 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 materials to the yes. situation. So Cameron's dad had me cracking up. I, we were scrubbing the inside of the body with the, uh, the 3M Scotch Bright, and I hit a place, and he came back, and he's like, "No, you need to hit it some more." And I'm like, "All right, scrub a little more." Came back a third time, "No, you need to scrub it some more." And I'm like, "Man, this is a race car." <laughs> yeah, and that's that was the hardest problem is probably trying to convince Tim that like, dude, we're kind of building something a little yeah. nicer than just the Rust-Oleum yeah. white. <laughs> oh, <I told> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with Rust-Oleum white, and nothing at all. I mean, that's. No. But we just wanted to do do a little something a little nicer for to represent MP, you know, to really to really build it to a stand a different standard, yeah. you know. And that's one of the things that's, that's kind of pushing us to be better, right? To be better as an organization, be better as as a company, be better as um, PR side of things to show what we're doing, kind of open the whole doors up. Um, but to to show that hey, we're building stuff back like we did 50 years ago in our own building was just bitching, man. Um, Rigid. Yeah. Well, that's that was really keeping us lit up and looking sharp. Um, Aaron and uh, the guys over at Rigid, I appreciate everything you guys did to step it up, getting us lit up, getting us looking right. Again, those things are awesome product, fair price, um, and it works well. So, um, you know, that's, uh, 
That's a good one. Yeah, uh, I'll never forget when we just had the 20 inch light bar. <laughs> Yes. That thing was brighter than any other light I'd ever used. Yeah, we, um, the KC Night Race. Yes. I mean, Tim was my uh, co pilot, co driver as well. And uh, we had lost fenders off my car, which had the headlights in it. <laughs> Thank you for the person who never turned one in. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, all we had left was the 20 inch light bar um, on the hood of my car, nothing else. And we were able to, uh, to podium yeah. at a night race in the middle of freaking. Nevada. Barstow, right? Nevada. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't Nevada. Sorry, Gene. And uh, that, that, that course kicked our ass. <laughs> so um, shout out to Rudge uh, for rigid lights on that. Um, PRP seat belts got us set up. Got a nice couple steering wheels in there as well. Yep. Um, feather light batteries. Yes. I'm telling you right now, um, I'm sure he's watching and chimed in on this show. Uh, do not sleep. Uh, if you have a badass streetcar, a hot streetcar, um, a drag car specifically, um, and you want the maximum cranking amps, maybe you got a big high compression motor and you want a lot of cranking amps to go with a high torque starter, Featherlight Batteries has a package for you. Okay. They are, there's no, nothing against Odyssey or Optima or anybody else. This is just a completely different technology. And it's it's a little bit more money, but they are badass. Uh, I'll give you an example. The regular Odyssey PC925 case, which is a great battery. They work wonderful. They're, what, around 300 bucks or something yeah. around neighborhood. Um, they have around 40 amp, uh, um, amp hours runtime, something along those lines, and around 500 cranking amps, just shooting from the hip. And they were on they weigh around 25 30 pounds featherlight has a battery that we've we've that i personally worked with him to help develop to fit a 925 case that has over 1300 cranking amps over 80 amp hours of runtime and only weighs seven pounds yeah and you can mount it inside outside upside down it doesn't matter um we actually mount them on their sides i couldn't believe when i picked the thing up how light it was it was like this isn't even a battery yeah, it's it's uh, it's amazing, and I will tell you right now, they are absolutely badass. I mean, um, there's a few reasons why we designed this battery, why I picked this battery to do and design it the way I did, and work with um, with with uh, John uh, from Featherlight, it, just because of the things we want to do by getting stuck and a remote start and stuff like yeah. that, a remote bump. Um, I'll, I'll tell them; I don't really care. So, one of the thought processes. Uh, to building a battery with a super high cranking amps was if we go to Mexico or we do some kind of crazy off-road race or even Vegas to Reno. Yeah. Um, should you get stuck in a race, maybe somewhere near your deck lid, you put a remote starter button to turn the starter over without the kill switch off. And if you and your co-driver need help, you can push and you can hit the starter button to help dig you out of the hole. Um, that was one of the reasons why we, uh, why we designed that battery the way we did. So, um, there's a ton of stuff, um, the thoughts, the, 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 the thought processes to these builds, um, I think are, are second to none. Every, every part of it was thought out before we pulled the trigger on something. Yeah, for sure. Don't let me forget. I have to thank my wife too. Well, now's your for chance the, for the vinyl. She, uh, did the wrap and stickers and definitely happy with the way it came out. Yep. Shout out to her. And what's her, what's her Instagram? Vile designs. There you go. Um, who else? Uh, we definitely got to thank, um, a one muffler, a one exhaust gave us, uh, supported the exhaust on the builds. Um, uh, those things, um, those things sound bitching and, um, we've been dyno testing them both, both styles, the step header and the, the, the regular, um, and both have had phenomenal results with them. Um, big shout out to tiger. So tiger, thank you for again, for trusting in us. Um, I, uh, We've got a long history there with MP and Tiger and A1 mufflers. So I'm glad we're really moving forward and turning pages and different things that we're doing. So we're super thankful to, to have them on, on, on board. Um, uh, McKinsey's obviously for helping us step up. Um, and then we really stoked to uh, ink a deal with Yokohama Tire this year. Um, I cannot uh, thank them enough for entrusting with what we wanted to build and the races that we wanted to hit and um, not necessarily chasing a championship in any realm, but just wanted to do really good in a lot of different um, 
uh, uh, sectors. And I'm, and I'm glad that, that it ended up working out the way it did because they didn't pay me to say this, but we ran Yokohama's on the swing axle car at the last prim race. And I was blown away at how well they worked. I was super happy with the tire. If I had to pay for them, I wanted to run Yokohama's again. Yeah, for sure. So, but yeah, we were just super stoked um, to, to really work with those, uh, them and, uh, and uh, you know, you guys, you've, you've had plenty of testing with the tire. It was all new for me. And uh, we see a lot of people out there running them, so that was cool. Yeah. Oh man, where else? I feel like we're uh, forgetting some somewhere. But uh, awesome. again, it was unplanned to kind of get into all of it. But uh, someone's going to get into us for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, when it talks to products, um, safety is a big concern, right? Um, how you fabricate things, how you design, develop, and whatever. Um, it all goes into thought. And a lot of people, in my opinion, after just, again, a, 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 on the drag side of stuff, we don't worry about it too much because you have yeah. safety safari. But on the off-road side of things, it's you. It's the man and the machine and the environment. Yeah. And you pack in, you back out, right? So you know, being exposed to that and having a, an unpleasant yeah. reminder about it. Um, we've been actually pretty stoked to uh, work with um, One Life Trauma. And uh, just for what it's worth, guys, um, take a look at it. Take a look at this this box, this kit right here. Um, if this is the metal, metal bracket that it comes with for mounting it like inside a roll cage or wherever you want. Uh, Josh and uh, their company is uh, is just amazing. Um, it, the story behind it all, I won't tell you here, uh, but it's, it's inspired by true events. We'll just put it like that. And uh, and everything you need basically to kind of get you out of a pickle is inside this little box. I'm trying to move some of this stuff out of here so you can see. But uh, very cool buckle. Um, we'll pop it out real quick here and see. So you can see it's nice steel bracket, um, heavy, super heavy duty with buckles. Um, you can six bolt holes. You can mount it hard. You can actually bend the little tabs in the back hose and then hose clamp it down. It comes with actually uh, rubberized hose clamps that will attach it. Um, and not, you know, it's a waterproof case, three buckles and straps. And this thing is just loaded with safety equipment. Um, anything from emergency drinking water to a splint. I mean, the list is like crazy. Um, dust proof, crush proof case, uh, high visibility blue wrap, 30 cents, like uh, eye wash solutions and gauzes and shears and emergency blanket. You know, I'm there's God, there's 25 things in here. Ibuprofen tablets, surgical tape, butterflies. Uh, bandages, adhesive bandages. I mean, um, sponges and gauze and and uh, um, smelling salts. It's all in in this case. Um, look them up. I highly encourage you if you're a, an outdoorsman, if you're you know a prepper, um, if you're just if you're into anything, you know, throw one of these, throw it in your backseat of your car, the trunk of your car, wherever it is, keep it. Uh, we now put them in our race cars, um, you know, going through tech inspection and going through, um, you know, personal trauma, what I did to my finger. And I now have this dead skin that's basically dead. It's nasty and it'll never be the same that it could have been avoided should I have had some type of clean and wipe and moisture on this finger. Um, it would be really good. Um so this is something I actually yeah. kind of proud of and and really glad to have them uh, on board with us. I can I highly encourage you. They're not necessarily cheap. Um, I'm sure we'll have a discount coupon code for you guys very, very soon. Um, but definitely look them up. One Life Trauma, local company, sourced all here. And uh, one dude, one dude owns it and uh, and does this as a side gig to his normal day job. So look them up. I I'm super stoked to actually have them because I'll tell you right now, I've been in the point where I felt freaking helpless, man. And it sucks. Um, I thought it was going to be okay. Wrapping a towel around it. And, um, no, I'm going to deal with this the rest of my yeah. life. So. Well, unfortunately 
I'm guilty of it as well, but safety's at the back of our mind and all this stuff. So it's like what starts out as fun can turn bad real quick, you know? So you don't want to sleep on something like that at the end of the day. Yep. And, uh, and just to know, like, even, you know, I almost, well, you know, I don't want to say I almost challenge the, the, uh, organizations to raise their bar on tech kits or medical kits but i know that i've seen some pretty crazy shit go through <laughs> five bandages and a ziploc baggie yeah. and some q-tips and you know it just, it just um you know being again feeling helpless um this is a nice little peace of mind to have and i don't ever want to have to use it but my god if it's there i need it i do remember it, uh, i don't know if i shared this on the last one or not but we were at a mint 400 and we got stuck out in the desert for over eight hours oh, with dude. like one small bag of trail mix that was it and thankfully another vehicle or two had broken down you know that had water or something else you know it's like you don't realize how easy you get out get in that situation until you're stuck in it you go to a best in the desert race your your crew just can't out can't go out there and save you you know you're right. stuck there until one of their vehicles get to you you know and they're trying their hardest it's not like they want to leave you out there but very easily you can be stuck out there for a while. So what do you take now? Um, we stuff waters in the doors. Um, we get, we have been running a standard medical kit, not as extensive as that, but that's a huge bonus. What are the snacks would you recommend or well, you take beef jerky, beef jerky, trail mix, granola. Um, We've been yes. stuffing cliff bars. Yeah. We stuff cliff. We, this, uh, we is all, actually, this is all cool stuff. Like I didn't think about that, but now you're talking about like, damn, what if you do get stuck out there for a good eight hours? And pack hours? double the water. Cause I'll tell you when you're out there and I can only speak from my first, my experience, right? Right. But you're out there, you're racing, you're eating dust. Like when you get back from the first part, you're, it's all over your face. It's in your mouth. It's everywhere. You know, especially being in the back of the pack. Ha ha ha. Jokes aside. <laughs> I'm just trying to throw it out there now to save the bullshit. Yeah. But you know, dude, you, 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 especially if something happens, right. you're pumped up, you know, you pound one. Like we had four bottles with us and like a half one that was rolling around from like the previous race. Yeah. Dude, you'd pounded the first one right away and you're like, oh shit, you know, I'm still yeah. thirsty. I'm still cotton mouth. And I mean, you know, you're gasping, yeah. you're doing this, you're doing that. And then you pound the second one. You're like, oh crap. Right now we're at hour three sitting on the hillside and there's like a half a bottle left and I'm ah. looking at camera. I'm like, I'll whip your ass for half a bottle of water like you're gonna yeah. lose this fight you know yeah, so, dude, i didn't think about it until you said eight hours out there i'm like oh well what happens if this is middle of the day you're just burning out there yeah, yeah you know you, you can't find any can shade you. <laughs> yeah. you know a lot of what other people do is they'll put uh camel packs in there oh that's smart into the cage and yeah i think what they go up to a gallon some yeah of them. that's what we ran the next very next race was camel back but still trying to get to that and then the bladder you know you're rolling around the bladder could pop whatever else what we did is is uh, I went and bought one of those um, rugged bags. Um, they're like that vinyl, real like real. I don't even know what kind of material that is, but it's like a real like leathery kind of material, big crusty zipper. Yeah. And uh, we filled it with snacks and like six bottles of water now, and it actually gets underneath the seat. Oh, that's cool. So and we zip tie it around one thing, so that way if it does go around, it won't just start flying around everywhere. That's the yard selling it. Yeah, that's cool, man. Good advice. Cliff bars, savior. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and definitely comfortable shoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, let's see. We got some more questions coming through here. Uh, where was the one that I saw? Trying to get through. Appreciate all this stuff coming through. Um, Larry, you hit it again. Larry Jr., hats off to everyone. A hell of an effort. It totally was. Alex VZM, thanks for checking in, brother. I hope everything's going well in Mexico. And I'm really looking forward to that show in April. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it can go on uh otter the overland bus question great question what gave you the hardest time on the build that's a tough one well i hate to say it don't say the, don't say the people okay no, 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 <laughs> i'm just no. kidding um no which it, it it actually was the engine which it wasn't necessarily a hard time. It was just a time constraint. And I have to give a huge shout out to Manford, which is pretty much my business partner and his dad. We call him Opa. He's pushing almost 80 years old. Um, because I was stuck here, they spent three days building a race engine for me, like to the T. And that's a lot of work to do in that amount of time. And if you're kind of keeping up with the builds, that thing showed up on Saturday to get put on the dyno. And we yeah. were testing the next day so that was part of the issue we didn't get that thing fired up until three o'clock in the morning in the car damn that's so, crazy yeah that and, was, and by the way that's a brand new motor brand new setup 
brand new exhaust that we've never run because yep. that's the step header that's on his car and yeah and then we had to you know dyno it jet it rejet it yeah re -pull I mean, it <laughs> jack and i could have spent another four hours on the dyno but it would, didn't have the time but we made sure it was jetted correctly that's what mattered yeah um so good 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 one there and i mean and and also manfred is uh he's you know the ghost the ghost man it's uh <laughs> he's he's a difficult situation obviously he's yeah. in too but he's just a he's a brilliant brilliant dude when it comes to stuff yeah you know i was fortunate enough to be put in a position i'm a younger guy i'm not even 30 yet that stepped into this world and you know he was the guy that stepped in and is teaching me everything i know you know about building race engines and if you're in the volkswagen world you know how hard it is to get that info out of people yeah you know so i was very fortunate for that and then i show up here and i got guys like jack chiquette that have been opening up to me as well you know so it's like another couple cherries on top you know yeah, yeah. it's nice to have anthony chica and jack too, in yes. your in your in your, in your corner and you know even even fast jesse will humble you with his comments of 50 horsepower yeah. turds but in all in all you can still <laughs> pick his brain and and yeah. and uh he's a smart dude i'll give him that he knows how to build some power so um yes alex i got a few toys on the desk we always like to leave a couple little uh little trinkets out there just to mess around um dusty summit um dude shout out to that guy too yes so if you don't know you guys check out dusty summit on ig um dude's a phenomenal photographer came out and shot the uh double vision cars uh you know again came in was shooting per periodically throughout the uh throughout the build process so which is going to make for a very very good article in a couple of magazines um but uh but yeah, he came in and came out there and shot some great stuff. And I'm, I'm so, I got the drop box this morning and his bitch. And yes. there's going to be some, uh, some great shots to blow up really nice. I know my non PR side wants to post all of them. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Yeah. We got to, we got to hold back. Uh, Lucas hand. Thanks for checking in. Um, you know, Darren, you brought up another great point. Um, for those of you guys that are going to King of the Hammers or or just in general, if you guys enjoy the outdoors, hunting, fishing, camping, backpacking, off-roading, whatever it may be, he said it best. Don't leave, your, don't leave your trash. Be good humans. Pick up after yourself. If you pack it in, pack it out um, and and pick up after yourself. Don't don't expect somebody else to uh, to do it for you. So great, great comment there, Darren, because I'd hate to see it. And and uh you know, at the MP camp, we usually bring extra trash bags now and to offer our, our uh, assistance and we'll make it happen. Oh, buggy whip too. Yes. Buggy whip. We cannot forget to thank them for the big, beautiful, bright lights yes. that are make this thing look good. Um, it's hard to keep them all straight, man. Sometimes it's very, very difficult. Um, but buggy whip Russ, thank you so much for stepping up, making not only the cars look good, but the pits are going to look even better um a couple of things so sorry guys i'm trying to get through these things and and these questions i'm just literally i'm trying to get through them all right now um jason have you guys even slept yet and i really not <laughs> much man we've got to uh prep the cars today basically tim's here today we're gonna prep the cars get them all ready uh, we had to pull the motor in your car uh, just to make some uh, some adjustments and a little revamp on a couple things we want to make some tweaks to make good power nothing was necessarily wrong we just did it because we wanted to uh, we think we found some i think we find some power yeah and then uh and just do a final nut and bolt in the car and uh, getting everything really final and putting stuff back in the car that we just left out while we were testing so make it easier to get to things like the firewalls and different stuff like that um and then shit, man we load tomorrow and we're out the door and uh and then we got to pre-run and pre-run and be ready to go. Maybe so. maybe racing in the snow. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's what somebody else posted on here. It's it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be freaking cold. Yeah. That <laughs> doesn't doesn't happen very often in Southern California. I'll tell you that much. Hey, Lucas. By the way, uh, performance tip: it works best to run fifty weight. So go ahead and get that in your car now. And uh, and get you all set up for that cold winter morning. It helps protect. It's real thick, so it stays on the parts real well. And I got extra <laughs> yeah. filters for sale. Um, Corey oh. Patton, what's up? Checking in. Thank you for towing the cars. Highline Motors, uh, thank you for towing the cars to the test session. Yeah. It's cool just to 
try to bring them all in and and uh just thanking everybody that makes it possible i think you you've uh, already put it in one of your podcasts already but about having a booth there yes so we will have a booth at king and hammers um just showcasing some of the new off-road product mainly is what our focus is out there you know we'll have some of our engine parts and dress up parts and stuff like that but showing some of the new stuff that we're carrying um uh like the king kong adjusters or you know center adjuster the air boxes um stub axle kit micro stub axle kits yeah. um some of our wheels just stuff like that they'll all be out on display for you guys to touch feel get a good look at i was talking to adrian earlier and that's what he's trying to do is show you know what you see here on the table laid out is what is on that race car right there which i think is a great yeah great thing to do well, and that's 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 the thing we try to stress the most and i know we keep talking about it over and over and over again here on the show but is the stuff that we're running on the car with you know with the exception of a couple little gucci pieces that are just because we could um but like the drivetrain steering components is all off the shelf items i mean the wheel cylinders mass cylinder steering box tie rods ball joints bearings yeah cvs axles all of it i think most people uh get a kick out of hearing that like the race engines we build like over 90 percent of the parts that we build our race engines with come from mp yeah you know and it's kind of hard to swallow that when you look at the price of one but still you know it, it shows that there's quality parts being put well that's just it. the whole that's the whole purpose in the revamp of this organization over the last 24 months is to show that you know we're we're changing where we're going man and we're not afraid to put our money where our mouth is and we're and we're we're partnering with great people um you know both in the vw community and outside you know like we did with the moroso valve covers like we've done with xrp lines yes. you know we're, we're we're working alongside of great companies um to either help develop a new product uh like we did with the willwood calipers for our specs or a buy and sell program where we're buying xrp lines and we're building our own kits from it to sell to you the end user so um, and then just goes in down the rabbit hole of all the different machining stuff that we're doing and the cylinder head programs and all the stuff that we're doing in house that, uh, we've got a lot of great smart people here, um, to, to really build this for the future. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm stoked to, to be a part of it and I'm stoked to have, uh, have you alongside, uh, building these cool stuff with us. So I dig it. It's bitching. Um, man, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much the rundown. I didn't really want to get into too much, um, about the whole gig and everything we're doing. Um, one thing I seen too, is this whole entry fee with KOH too. Um, if you're having an issue with the entry, contact that Allen guy about getting your entry in. Yeah. Anybody basically that's a great one, Timmy. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, we encourage anybody that has a class 11 car to get out and get out and race this event. Yeah. Yes. It isn't cheap. It will cost you about four or five hundred dollars more to race this event. Well, that's a problem I've seen. People are going on there, and the entry somehow ends up at seventeen hundred bucks. Yeah. Dave Cole already went on Race Desert and said, "Look, here's your price. You know, get a hold of me." So I've talked to a few people now that did that. They got the entry down to where it should be. I think it's just under thirteen hundred bucks. Yeah, because it's here's here, it's a it's a thousand bucks entry fee, and then you have to get your USAC license, right? Now the USAC license, when you order a year, it's like 300 and some bucks. We're not going to run any other races this year with them. By the 150, they have an option for a one-time race, like 150 bucks. So now you're at 1150 co-driver license is like 80 bucks. I think now, mind you, the license is two things. It's a license for the organization or a membership fee, but it's also the insurance costs that they have to cover you for the racing. So for 150 bucks, they're covering you while you're at the event racing or on the grounds or whatever else. It's not that he's stuffing the money in Dave Cole's pocket. All right. Be an understanding of that. They're, they're, they're there because they're trying to sanction that event. All their races are sanctioned by USAC. It's a fantastic organization. Have they talked about a breakdown of pay yet? Has anybody come to a conclusion? From what I gather and from what Dave said, said on the show is that it'll probably be top five um 10 grand plus going to the winner and then it'll subsequently be all the way yeah. down to fifth place getting basically their cost to entry back yeah you know so, and that's a massive payout for it's a the massive entry of this race you know i don't think he's even going to make his money back to no. be honest i mean you. you you look at you look at that aspect of it 
But then you look at the business aspect of it. So for all these guys that, you know, did do have some sponsors that are helping them out, it's 650 bucks to go race pretty much any other organization out there, right? 650, 700 bucks. Yeah. Realm. You're still going to have to pay the membership and organization fee. There's another hundred bucks. Transponder fee. Transponder fees, all that stuff, right? So for essentially, that's why I say for about 400 bucks more, you're getting the opportunity to showcase your car, your craft, your sponsors, your sponsors mainly in front of 30 to 50,000 people on a jumbotron. You're getting to race against some of the best in, out there. Um, you got a uh, Hall of Fame rider, Larry Rossler, announcing the race for you and talk. I mean, how cool is it to have, you know, yeah. Larry Rossler's talking about Tim Sletton coming around the corner? Like, that's cool as shit, man. I mean, I, it's a it's a show it's an environment it's it's the total package um and then i believe his live feed that they're going to set up the cars to where you can um you know be able to watch the cars the live feed on that event and i thought there was something about an in-car camera too i don't know if that's going to be on this cars or not if they just stuff them in there or what they're doing or if it's even possible but i do believe you will be able to watch live stream and I think his live stream he quoted on the show somewhere around three million people watched it the yeah. last time. So a lot of exposure, a lot of bang for your buck. Um, and and then to finish, there'll be the last race of the night under the lights, the King of the Hammers for its first ever race of the class yeah. eleven. It's pretty badass. Um I don't know what else to say. Yeah. You know. I mean, you're 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 gonna you're gonna have a chance to showcase your driving skills, your spotlights, and you've got you know, manufacturers like Ford on the on grounds and tire companies and energy drink companies and all these different people that you're going to have an opportunity to put on a show in front of and the race with the big boys and Cameron steals and, and, uh, all of them out there, you know, um, it's pretty bitch an opportunity. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Kaylee just posted right now. says you want to race with the big boys, you got to pay the big boy price. But it's really not that much more. Um, I think timing has a lot to do with it just because yeah. it's, you know, we essentially have a race in three weeks behind <laughs> that. So it makes for a real quick yeah. turnaround time. Um, I mean, and we're, we're full blown addicts though. <laughs> yeah. And it makes for, uh, makes for good racing, makes for tight deadlines. Um, I think we're getting an hour and a half on the short course. So there's going to be some arm What's pump. Total arm miles? I don't know total miles because I think they were still cutting it. And Darren, if you know, I get an idea how the progression's coming on that, but it would probably be two to three miles total. So it's going to be a lot of laps yeah. and you should be able to see, this is the cool part the way that um, it's laid out anywhere in Hammertown, you should be able to watch the class 11 race at one point or another. You should see the cars coming through almost the entire track. That's cool. So it's going to be on display, the giant tabletops, the dueling 30 foot berms, who's going to have the best line. Let's just hope and pray they put a little grade to it before we go out and try to dance around those ruts. Hey, that's, Pete. <laughs> that's my worries. I think back at the Glen Helen race that Moore put on, man, that was an awesome event. But the guys lasted, what, 30 minutes on the short course track and they were beat. And then even the next day when I got to drive, that was a that was a three mile course around that place. And I think uh, Wilkie and I did five laps and I think what was it 40 40 minutes 45 yeah. minutes maybe but i i mean i was worked on the last lap i was praying it was the last one because i couldn't handle it anymore yeah it's uh it's gonna be a tough one um darren said the infield will smooth will be smooth but the outside areas will be rocky yeah. and uh, there's some rocky area there's some wash area that we're gonna come across there's some off camber area that they're probably yeah. gonna run through so and it's um, not the that's not so much the problem. It's all the turns that end up wearing you out. You know, we're running a stock steering box. We don't have no two to one or anything crazy like that. You know, we're, we have to turn those cars, you know? Yeah. So it's like, if there's a hundred turns, it's going to be a nightmare. Absolutely. But so well worth it. Heck yeah. I'm looking forward to it guys. I really hope you will stay abreast of what we're doing. Um, I highly encourage you. If you don't already do it, please get on our Facebook and YouTube pages hit that subscribe button, smash the notifications. So 
when we go live out there, you will stay up to date with everything we're going to be doing. It's going to be four crazy days of class 11 and other things we can find. The shenanigans yeah. will probably show you some of the cool um, rock races and rock bouncing and qualifying on that. We just want to give and bring you to you as much, uh, much cool stuff as we possibly can. Cause it's going to be a pretty bitch and show. Um, we will give you a couple of slide shows real quick here. So that way, if you have any questions that come up, um, you can ask away. And uh, so I'm going to go back and forth. Yeah. Hammer hunt. Uh, so no shorts, flip flops and tank tops. No, it's going to be freezing, freezing, freezing cold out there. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get to race in the snow. Let's just put it that way. Well, it's supposed to rain on Thursday, right? Saturday now too. So should be interesting. But with that being said, let's show you some of the cars. So there they are, guys. Um, that is Double Vision. I mean, that is the the team. That's the uh, two Class 11 cars camping directly out of the MP, MP Corporate HQ. Cars are kept here. They're maintained here. They're serviced here. They're stored here. And they will never leave here. But other than to go to racing, go to special events um tim's driving the 1103 i'm driving 1159 and uh they're bitching and uh, i'm really proud of uh of what you created man i really am stoked to see it and uh let you put your own spin on things and design stuff yeah i think that was the best part about it is how we mesh together on this you know it was i could handle the beginning stages of just the fabrication of everything and your fit and finish you know which I, I found it. I found myself being a little more nitpicky by the end of it. I think yeah. it was rubbing off on me, but I know now he's over here. I had to get a you know he splurs calls me. I do this. This is crazy. He comes in and uh, towards the end of the build, he's like, I got I splurged on myself, man. I had to do it. Got myself a steering wheel. I was like, <laughs> that's cool. But did you see this one? <laughs> he's still pissed about it. He totally did me dirty. I ended <laughs> up with the all black one. I didn't do. You bought it on your own. Then he comes in with the orange seamed one, and I'm oh, like, <laughs> just stunting on yeah. you. You know, but the you know the great part about it, we talked a little bit about this stuff was um, the the people that are getting involved with it, right? Um, as as the the builds progressed, right? I came up with an idea, and I said, "Hey, man." I sent you on a goose hunt. Can you find these brackets? There's like we got to do better than a hose clamp yeah. around a thousand dollar shock body like let's get out of this thing oh for anybody off road watching this right now with some king class 11 shocks or any fin king any shock, fin three inch king reservoir you have to check these out. these are something that um i came up with this idea i'm not i mean this was me and uh and then i pitched this idea to uh to george and i said george you know let's let's build this man can we do it and uh these clamps are literally go right around the king shock and fit around the bar. Um, currently, the, the tube diameter is inch and inch and a half. Um, so these things are bitching. And um, we ran to test. We ran it with just one to 15. If these are finned 15 inch reservoirs, we put one clamp on it in the front of the car, which takes all a lot of abuse and beating the shit out of it. And they didn't move us yeah, a, 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 a anywhere. Um, but these are these are going to be readily available. We'll have them on display at King of the Hammers, and uh, and you don't sleep on these. I'm telling you right now, these are like bubble cut. They engrave with JC stainless steel hardware. I mean, they're bitching. So don't don't uh, don't sleep on them. Uh, how is driving or who is driving which car? Black door, or white door. Um, the actually, it's probably just the look that you're seeing, uh, Moose. They're both the cars are identical. The paint jobs are identical. Um, only two differences. Yep. They're subtle. The sticker on the door, the main empty one, Corey's car has a white background, and mine is just the orange. And then the wheels, Corey got his powder coated, so he's got a little slightly different shade of wheels. Yep. But I'll be 1103, and he'll be 1159. Yeah, if you'll notice, the uh, the doors are the same. I just put the picture back up, but the the empty logo on 1159 has a white trim around it. Um, Timmy's, I really enjoy it too. We've kind of torn about it because it, it just has like a transparent orange and it gives it a different shade. It just pops a little more. Just different. 
totally different. So just the shading in front of it. So um, just another cool shot um, of the nice build shifter. Uh, we are running MP shifters in the car right now. And uh, this was a really cool one to share. So I dig that one. Hope you guys enjoy it. And I'm, I know I'm driving Shane crazy because I'm like waiting for the. Yeah. He's like, hey, where's the dash? Where's the dash? Um, this was just a cool standalone shot. One of our favorite shots um, of just the vehicle itself background and whatnot but now you get a good idea of kind of the look of it it's more of a custom color by the way this is a custom hand mixed color by the mad scientist brian foray literally in the on, on the yeah. mixing table in the back How and does this gray look yeah we just kept when we probably mix six or seven different shades just kept dabbing it in a single spot so we can kind of see which one he liked less best and then we mix this one up um I'm trying to get to these questions that keep coming through so bear with me uh carly screen thank you lucas appreciate it um how the color scheme come to be that was you for the most part yeah i mean did even eddie i mean eddie ch i mean i can't we just start spitballing oh, some stuff everything but those dang spikes man. <laughs> horrible yeah he was having fun with it but uh you know we went back and forth um you know and i'll talk about it so a lot of people were like well why orange why orange i was like guys you know mp's always blue it's like no it really wasn't i mean mp was always orange um let me pull this down real quick so you can actually get i'm making shane suffer right now because he's still chiming in on it um but yeah i mean you know mp's been orange um mp's been blue there's the race line heritage of it it's always had those orange stripes and that's kind of where yep. the orange influence came in we wanted it to look some somewhat modern yeah I think that gray with the black, it's just it's a classic yeah. color scheme, but it's been modernized, right? Yeah. With that different did you shade design of gray. All of them? Uh, I did no. a few of them. Dusty Summit actually designed quite a few of those too. I was gonna say because we ended up with a file of about fifteen different designs, yeah. And it was like, well, we like this, we like that. No, no, we like that. Well, in the end, we really ended up pulling three different. Yeah, that's what designs. I noticed when I went down there. I'm like, it looked like the orange one with the blue one. Yeah. And then you guys tweaked a few things. I'm like, it came wheels. out great. Yeah. yeah. And that's, <clears throat> that was the whole purpose of it. And like a lot of people don't understand. It's like my whole, my philosophy here is I never want to forget where we came from as far as for MP, right? The ingenuity, the racing heritage, the drive that, that in the entrepreneurial spirit, that, 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 that fire to do something bigger, better and better. And to me, that's represented um, by the orange, right? And paying homage to where we came from. Like I, uh, I'll never want to build an inch pincher. I'll never want to take away a lightning bug. That's that's their heritage. That's their cool. that's their stuff. I not, I'm never going to be that. I don't ever want to be that. And I want to thank them for what they created. What I wanted to do was pay homage to that, and not bring the technology aspect of it of really where we're going and embracing the machinery and the equipment and the tooling and the 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 the, the advancements of in in engineering that we have now, and take it to that next level. So it's that little old school, little new school, yeah. and really where we want to go for in the future. So that's my personal yeah. take on it. And it's really what I try to instill on my team and my group for how we want to lead this company for the future and 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 stuff. So I think it's super important. But dude, honestly, did he he did a damn good job prepping it? He came must have came back to me two or three times, throwing this, throwing that. I'm like, let's do this, let's do that, you know, and and then. Uh, scrap all three of them and yeah. put it together it just it worked man and i'm super stoked um i i do uh, when we talked about the shout outs right um none of this could be possible without mp right and without what they're allowing me to do and trusting with where i'm kind of going with it and spending the money right um and that falls down to to our cfo and our and our ceo um both those guys um i've never you know i've been here now almost two years and for those guys to come down and see what's going on and, and that, that frequency now going on and coming down, it becomes infectious, right? When the big guys are coming down to see what's up, the rest of the group wants to see what's going on. And that's what's really cool to be a part of. We're building history in this garage. Um, we're just building in the next chapter. And to be um, spearheading that with the rest of the group is just badass, man. And then to get the, the, the buy-in support from, from the powers, um, with the checkbooks is is always uh, is always good. So big shout out to those guys. Um, Want to kind of wrap this up? And I know 
Shane's still chiming in. He's like, you're making me wait. All right, Shane. I held you long enough. That should be a good view of a little old school, little new school. So we'll talk a little bit about the interior of the vehicle. These panels um, on the dash itself was an idea that, uh, that I came up with. I wanted to not cut my dash up. I wanted to kind of use the stock look of the dash, get that normal vibe, um, but just utilize the space provided to make it happen. Um, so with the trusty work, again, George, in a yes. couple of evenings, um, we created a CNC panel um, just cut out of aluminum that's designed to fit in the stock location using the stock holes, essentially, of like where the tabs would go through um, to hold in like a gauge panel or a dash. And we really tried to leave everything was possibly we could stock. Um, if you weren't putting a lot of weight behind this, you could have used a real small machine screw and it'd probably be fine. I'm a little over overkill because of just the abuse that they did. So I enlarged the holes just a little bit, but you could take everything back off this dash and put it back in place. I mean, even the stock radio plates designed with a backing plate and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know what? The, our dashes ended up turning out quite a bit different, actually, not only just because I ended up with the tack, um, but you actually have the side by side radio mounts, and I have the stacked. Ones. Yeah, and I like the side by side look. I think it just gives that different vibe. And, and you did choose for the stack communications device, but I'm sure this is driving Shane. And I think it's funny that the most talk about the car itself has been the dash in my yeah. car. And there's like, uh, uh, I think it was, you know, God, I want one of those. And Larry's to so Shane was posting that, and Larry's like, yeah, you and about 27 other people now yeah. want to put it. So it's a great tool. Um, and that's really what the plan is because this car is going to be test beds for other vehicle products uh, from MP. So I'm super, super stoked to have the, that on there and to definitely switch pros for stepping up and helping us out with the electrical components and building a badass switch dash um, piece. I love it. <laughs> Let's see. Shane Hook, Money Shot, can you talk about how you set up the transmission gear indicator? Well, it's really easy, actually, Shane. When you go to program the race pack, and when we get too nerdy on it, there's a bunch of files in there. You literally can program it to um, your shift. You're basically your red line where your shift points at, and then all you do is put each one of your gear ratios in and your ring and pinion gear, and it calculates it for you. And then it cross references that to the GPS sensor in there for your speed and your tack. So it just triangulates that and it calculates it and it gives you your gear selector and it's absolutely spot on perfect. Wow. And it does, there's no micro switch in there. There's no nothing. It just knows that at this roughly window, it gives, it gives you a variance window. That would be first gear based upon oh, and you roll out too. So you put your roll out of your tire size, your gears, your, your, you know, first through fourth gear, your final drive gear, i.e. I, ring opinion. And uh, in your shift, your shift, your red line, and it'll calculate it for you, man. It was that simple. I was set up in five minutes. Wow. And uh, the only thing this thing can't do is give you a warning light. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, I didn't want to highlight that. When you're talking this up, but. No, but uh, you can do it. There's just, there's a couple little drawbacks to it all. Um, but it's, it's um, nothing that's, you know, it was nothing was a deal breaker. Yeah. And I'm super stoked that I put it in. It's been it's been an absolute bitching device to have. Well, that's gonna be the first question with anybody with a Volkswagen who ends up putting one of those in is can an alternator light be programmed to it? Well, from the get go, no, but it can be done if you yes. ever run into that. It just takes a I think one more item, he said. Yeah, just one more little little box of some sort of module. Um and it'll only stay first gear, that's default, so it does not stay neutral. So because you're only gonna go forward. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the only drawback. Uh, Wink, thanks for bringing that. But the only drawback is it'll, only, it'll always be first gear uh, until you start moving, and then it'll know what you're doing from there. Um, thank you, Ari, for that. A Rod, thanks for the compliment on the nice dash. I'm super stoked about it, too. I um, remember we saw a race back first. Uh, bring some of those drag cars out with you, Corey. Now, these, uh, my 11 car is a drag car. It's got bigger tires on it. Um, everything looks better in orange. I totally agree with you, Michelle. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I'm guys, I'm going back through these questions before we kind of close out. Yes, Hills Up Close on Hammertown. Um, that's pretty much good, guys. And I just thank you guys for tuning in. It's been cool to just hang out, just a uh, little vibe. 
Um, it, what about anything you want to offer for people to kind of close out the segment with? Anything you want to handle? You know, before we, uh, I I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. You know, we, oh man, we met what a year ago now. Yeah, you know, and it's like look where we've come. You know, we were able to do a couple things together now, and I think create some of the nicest class 11 cars out there right now. And I couldn't be any more uh, fortunate. I get to promote my business, whether it's the fabrication side of things, the engine building side of things, and then go out and showcase that it works and be entrusted by a massive company like Impy. I mean, it's, um, you earned it, you know, you earned it by character. You earned it by, um, your, your skill sets. I mean, you, you know, I, I mean, I don't need to, uh, to tell you all that stuff, you know, I mean, you did it because you, you, it wasn't lip service and there's a lot of people that talk a lot of, talk a lot of big game, talk a lot of shit. And, um, and, and it's easy to weed that out of the system. Yeah. So kudos to you, dude. Thank you. I'm glad it worked out well for, for both parties involved. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, you got a badass hot rod that, uh, that (laughs) didn't be supporting and taking good care of it. And uh, it's going to build some cool stuff, man. I'm, I'm super excited um you know that does lead me to one closing point so a couple of things have been brought to my attention um guys i'm trying to close this out ricky thank you so much tim he said good luck Corey and tim wish you could be here too dude um but uh, larry will keep that seat warm for you or wet one of the two (laughs) um belinda thanks for checking in thanks for driving uh boo boo around i know he was a little tired i saw him catching some flies there in the passenger seat yeah um, here together uh, he said you guys make a, a wink chime in you guys make a great team uh, i was honored to help out um proud to tell my friends look at these guys yeah i mean dude you and you know honestly dude you stepped up big um del mike all those guys i mean even byron byron killed it on car two we had our doubts byron we had our doubts but you came through clutch buddy yes, appreciate did. it uh yeah uh but no honestly there's a couple things going around um rumor mill whatever else um for those sponsors that we've mentioned um if it's not core if it's not myself calling or timmy calling on their behalf it ain't us asking for anything if somebody calls and asks for something from this uh for our, our show our cars our build it's all bullshit yeah, i'm telling you right now if it's not myself or tim calling it ain't for us. Um, so don't let anybody call and tell you it's on behalf of anybody else or on there. We did have that come up to attention um, shortly after lunch. So I'm going to nip it in the bud now. Um, I know who you are. I know who you called. And uh, don't try to represent uh, that you're calling on our behalf because uh, it's not going to be handled poli- uh, lightly. And, uh, and those people will be dealt with. So don't be a dirtbag. Um, other than that, man, dude, we're super stoked. I'm pumped up for KOH. I'm pumped up to give you all the smoke. Yeah. I'm number 16 on the list. So Corey's about to get the smoke. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, man, guys, I had a cool time hanging out with you. I mean, an hour and 15 minutes went by in no time. I'm um, just enjoying um, what's cracking. Uh, we'll close the show out with a couple other things. We have a drag race coming up at Barona towards uh, in february so get active get into that if you got a drag car get it ready um, we need to show as much support as we can come out in the masses in the droves if we can to give something out there um you know we need to we need to get out and get these people rolling um it's important to have these events and uh and and people's livelihood depend on it so um get that going um, I saw the SEVW is going to be putting their stuff out. So it looks like they're going to have a pretty good deal on the outside of um, obviously anything out of California is going to be doing okay. And, uh, and we, uh, we keep our thoughts and prayers to, um, to those that are trying to build and do things in Southern California. You guys are our hearts with you. Um, we're hope we're pulling for you. We hope stuff happens um, safely and gets it ready to roll. With that being said, Probably won't have a show next week. We'll be absolutely exhausted from KOH. Um, if we do, great. If not, I'll let you know. Um, other than that, thank you so much for tuning in each and every week. My shout out and thank you for my dude, Timmy Sletton, Sletton Engineering. If you don't follow him on Instagram, do so. And then we will be back um, hopefully next week yeah. with a cool ass race report. 
If not, we'll be back the following week. It just depends on how things go. Um, we'll catch you next week. Engineer Eddie, get us out of here today.